Hi friends, if you're new here, welcome. My name's Abby. If you're not, welcome back. Today I have a video to share with you that I am super excited about for a couple different reasons. One being that this is something that has been frequently requested over the past couple of months, and another being that it surrounds a topic that I am super passionate about, and that is natural living. So we live in a very toxic world, we are constantly being bombarded by toxins, and while we're never going to be able to fully avoid that, I do want to try and make sure that the products that I'm using, be it cosmetics, personal care products, or household cleaners are not loaded with known carcinogens and endocrine disruptors like most of the products in the grocery stores are. So today we're going to be tackling some homemade household cleaners. I'm going to be sharing seven recipes with you. These are all tried and true recipes that I have been using for years and years, so I hope you do give them a try, whether you're concerned about the toxins or even if you're just looking to save a little bit of money, this is a great way to do that. So let's hop in. The seven DIY recipes we will be making in today's video include dish soap, laundry detergent, fabric softener and scent booster, foaming hand soap, stainless steel cleaner, glass cleaner, and an all-purpose cleaner made two ways. The first recipe that we're going to be making is our homemade dish soap. And for this, you're going to need some vegetable glycerin, some castile soap in bar form, washing soda, and a cup and a half of water. So I have a small pot here with a cup and a half of water in it. And to that, I am going to add in two tablespoons of grated castile soap. Now you do have the option to use some liquid castile soap However, it's going to produce a thinner dish soap. So if you want something that's a little bit more like a gel consistency, I would recommend using just the bar soap shredded up. So this is Dr. Bronner's unscented. And then we're going to be using some washing soda. And the washing soda is going to help to cut grease. You should be able to find this just at your local store. I'll link it down below as well. But if you're not able to find it, you can do some research Washing soda is essentially baking soda that has been heated. So baking soda is sodium bicarbonate and washing soda is sodium carbonate. So we're going to be adding some of that in as well as the vegetable glycerin. But I'm going to start out by heating up this mixture to get that soap dissolved. So after a few minutes over low heat, our castile soap is fully dissolved in our water here. You do want to make sure that there are no clumps because when you transfer this into a bottle with a pump, you're going to end up with clogs if everything is not fully dissolved. So next we're going to be adding in our washing soda, just a teaspoon of that. And a teaspoon of vegetable glycerin as well. The vegetable glycerin is not entirely necessary. You could choose to omit that, but if you're like me and you're bad about wearing gloves while you're washing dishes, that's a great thing to add in because it's going to help to moisturize your hands and it also kind of helps to make a smoother product is what I find. Once this is whisked together really well and there are no clumps, we're going to transfer this into a 16 ounce container. I'll be sure to link all of this in the description box down below. And you have the option of using a pump like this one has, or what I'm going to be using today is one of these spouts that you just pour from. So we are going to get this filled. And you'll notice that the dish soap looks quite watery still. And I'm going to make a big mess while I do this. It is going to thicken up over the next few hours. And there we have it, homemade dish soap with just a few ingredients in just a couple of minutes. 
Next, I'm going to be sharing with you my all-natural laundry detergent recipe. Now, this recipe is on my blog, so if you're someone that would like to read reviews before you go ahead and try this, I'll leave it down in the description box below so you can go ahead and read reviews because I am not the only one that loves this recipe. My blog was down for a little while and I had people messaging me on Instagram asking to share the recipe since they couldn't find it. So this is something that I've been making for 10 years now. Uh, it took me a long time to nail down a recipe that worked really well, that didn't include borax, and that wouldn't leave um, soap stains on my clothing. That was a big issue that I ran into. And that was also effective in removing stains. So this is what I came up with. And I've been using this on and off for 10 years. I'll be honest that just kind of depending on the season we're in, often we will buy a non-toxic laundry detergent at the store, but it is way, way more expensive than this. And this is the recipe I always come back to. For this recipe, you're going to need a gallon size container. We're going to be making a gallon of laundry detergent. My gallon size jars are currently occupied, so I'm just using two half gallon jars. You also have the option of using an old laundry detergent bottle or a beverage dispenser. If you've got a bigger family, you could also increase the size of this batch and make this in a five gallon bucket. We're going to need some coarse salt, baking soda, washing soda, and liquid Castell soap. So our first step is going to be adding our salt, baking soda, and washing soda into our jars and getting that dissolved really well in some hot water before we add in our soap. I'll be telling you the measurements per gallon, but you'll see that I am just dividing this between the two jars. So per gallon, we are going to need a quarter cup of salt. This is coarse salt. We're going to need a half cup of baking soda. and a half cup of washing soda. The washing soda is going to help to remove stains. Washing soda is a solvent, so that's how it's going to work. Now, I am just going to get these both filled almost all the way with hot water. Really hot tap water works great, and we're gonna stir this really well so we can get all of that dissolved. I'm giving these a really good stir to try and get everything dissolved well in the hot water. You wanna try and do this well now because that's going to help to avoid any separation in the detergent once it cools. Every once in a while when I make this, it does separate a little bit. It's no big deal if it does, just give the jar a good shake before you add it to your load of laundry. So per load of laundry, you're going to want to add a quarter cup of this detergent. Next, we're going to add our liquid Castile soap. This I find is the trick to not having soap stains. A lot of times these recipes will call for grated bar soap, just like we did for the dish soap. However, it's not my preference. I think this works a lot better. So per gallon, you're going to do a half cup of liquid Castile soap. And we add this in after all the other ingredients. So when we added the hot water, it doesn't bubble up and make a big mess. At this point, if you wanted this scented, you could add in essential oils. I would do about 30 drops per gallon, but I prefer to just leave this unscented. We're gonna give this another stir and then this is complete.
When I use these half gallon jars for my laundry detergent, I like to use these mason top pour tops. These are great. We use them for everything. I use them for milk in the fridge, but they're great for laundry detergent if you're gonna use a half gallon jar like this. There's our completed laundry detergent. So you just need four ingredients to make an effective, non-toxic laundry detergent at home. The next recipe we're going to be making is a homemade fabric softener and scent booster. So I am not someone that typically would use a fabric softener. So I use this more as a scent booster. As you saw, I like to leave my laundry detergent unscented and then use these ingredients to make a scent booster and fabric softener that I can add into specific loads if I want to add a little bit of scent. So you're going to see that we are using repeat ingredients from the laundry detergent and we are going to be doing a cup of baking soda and three cups of coarse salt which are going to help soften and then we're going to be adding in some essential oil you could use whatever scent you like I prefer to use lavender so we're going to be adding in 40 drops so quite a bit of essential oil but we're only going to use a tablespoon or two of this per load. You can also use Epsom salt in place of coarse salt if you don't have coarse salt on hand. As far as essential oils go, that is not a regulated industry, so you do want to find a brand that you trust that uses 100% pure essential oils with no fillers. A lot of times there are added fragrances or uh, filler oils, so for this I'm using a pure essential oil. I'm just giving this a really good mix and then we are going to get this into a jar. If you're looking for a non-toxic alternative to dryer sheets, I would suggest wool dryer balls. You can either make them yourself or you can buy them for pretty inexpensive. I'll link some down below and you can just throw those in with your clothes. That'll help to speed up drying time a little bit. And you can also add essential oils right onto those dryer balls. And that way your clothes will have a little bit of added scent as well. There is our fabric softener and scent booster, homemade with just three ingredients. Next, we're going to be making a foaming hand soap. So you could use this in a regular pump dispenser. However, it's going to be quite liquidy. So you do want to get a foaming pump if you want this to be a foam soap. Now we have a 16 ounce container here and I am going to add about a cup and a half of water. And this is so simple to make. I really try to avoid any antibacterial hand soaps. Most antibacterial soaps contain triclosan, which can be very disruptive to your hormones. And if you think of it, like any antibacterial product is going to kill the bad bacteria, but it's also going to kill any good bacteria. So to this, we're going to add in a half cup of Castell soap liquid again. And we're adding this after the water so it doesn't get all foamy. And again, you do have the option to add essential oils if you please, but I prefer to just leave this unscented. There you have it, super easy foaming hand soap with just one ingredient and some water. For our stainless steel cleaner, we need just three ingredients. So we are going to need a cup of white vinegar, a tablespoon and a half of olive oil, and then about three quarters of a cup of water. I don't really measure the water, I just fill up to the top of my 16 ounce spray bottle. Thank you. 
Okay, so then a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. I'm sure other oil would probably work, but I have not tried it. And that is all there is to it. So with the oil being in there, it's going to separate a little bit. You're going to want to give this a really good shake before you go to use it. So there we have our two ingredient stainless steel cleaner. Next, we're going to be making a homemade glass cleaner that I promise is better than anything you have tried before. This is kind of an odd recipe. It has a very random ingredient, which is cornstarch but I promise you will be blown away by this. I'm not sure where the recipe originated. There are a ton of different versions online. I've kind of adapted it over the years. So we need three tablespoons of white vinegar. Three tablespoons of rubbing alcohol or you can also do vodka. And we are going to top that up with water. And then we're going to be adding in a half tablespoon of cornstarch. So you do want to make sure that that water is cold so that the cornstarch doesn't start to thicken. You can mix this all together in a separate container first, but I typically will just mix it right in the jar. I have no idea why the cornstarch works, I just know that it does. So if you know why, feel free to let me know. Now we're just gonna put the cap back on and give this a really good shake. As you keep this in your cabinet, you're going to notice that the cornstarch starts to settle at the bottom. Totally fine, just give it a good shake before you use it. Just three ingredients, alcohol, vinegar, cornstarch, and some water to make a great glass cleaner. The last couple recipes that I'm going to be sharing with you are both for all-purpose cleaners, and I'm gonna share with you how to make an all-purpose cleaner two different ways. So we're going to do a cast oil soap based one and a vinegar based one, and these are both gentle but effective. I use them on all surfaces in our home. And I do just wanna point out that oftentimes I'll see recipes online for all-purpose cleaners that use both castile soap and vinegar in one recipe. And that is not something that you want to do because the vinegar is going to desaponify the castile soap. So best to do just a vinegar-based one or just a castile soap-based one. For our vinegar-based all-purpose cleaner, I am going to add eight ounces of white vinegar to a 16 ounce spray bottle. And since I'll use this on more surfaces than I would use the stainless steel cleaner, which has quite a bit of vinegar in it as well. I am going to go ahead and add some essential oils to these. I like to add lemon for just an all-purpose cleaner. And we are going to top this up with some water. Another way that you can scent a vinegar-based all-purpose cleaner is by infusing a vinegar with you can either do pine or citrus i've done this very often with either lemon peels or orange peels just fill a jar up with them top it off with vinegar and leave it in the cabinet for a month or so and you're going to have a great citrusy cleaner i'm going to be adding about 10 drops of lemon essential oils to this uh, spray bottle
And then for our Castile soap based one, we are going to fill this 16 ounce spray bottle mostly full with water. And then we're going to add in our Castile soap. Again, you want to add the soap in after so that you don't have a bubbly mess. And then we just need two tablespoons of Castile soap. So here we have our all-purpose cleaners, both with just a single ingredient plus some water. Super simple to make and very cost-effective. All right, friends, that wraps up this video. I hope this gave you a little bit of inspiration as to how you can clean up the products in your home and also save a little bit of money by making these yourself. They are super easy, super inexpensive, and better for you. So definitely give them a try. If you do, I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. I'll be sure to link all of the recipes and the blog posts that I mentioned in the description box down below, as well as links to the products that we use today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.